Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of the LFGM podcast. Let's fucking go Mets. Uh, we just watched an exhilarating uh, eight-inning game. Yeah, an eight-inning final. Uh, the Mets uh, took game one today over the Brewers in a uh, in a doubleheader. Um, so they have game two tonight starting at 7-10. Um, DeGrom, pretty good. Uh, two mistakes left out over the plate. Uh Really an, an exciting game in a lot of different facets. Matt, how you doing, buddy boy? Doing good. I mean, yeah, we just watched a sick game. Um, great comeback. Uh, I, I mean, before we start, we, I've wanted to address this for a few weeks now. I know you definitely feel the same. Um, does SMY just have three commercials? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back in the New York groove. I love that song, so it's fine. <laughs> I know, but that, they play the one other, I, I don't even know. I should know all of these. Nimmo, they play sometimes. Well, Nimmo, where, doing, Nimmo doing the, uh, uh, go, gosh dang it, when he's trying to get the, the, the home run yeah. into the, yeah. the bullpen or whatever. Yeah, it's funny. Well, we're, we're also, I, I don't know about you, but I stream the game. I watch it on my Apple TV. You do the same thing? That's another thing. Yeah, I'm streaming it from a fire stick. That's probably why, right? We're getting the same three commercials on the stream. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cable, I feel like, doesn't do that. So, okay. What'd you, uh, so, what'd you think about the Grom today? I mean, just great, great all around, you know. You get better um, as you get, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't even like worry if he like no. gives up like a homer in the first or anything. And he, it, like, he, you know, these guys are jumping on, like, the first pitch fastball a little bit more. And if you just get your barrel out to 101, then it's going to go, you know. So, yep. but you're also, he's he's going to strike out a ton. He is just so good. It is insane. Yeah. Like, he's just making those adjustments now, too, where he's kind of, I think he's throwing a little bit more of a uh, two-seamer. Yeah, it's um, fading for sure. I was going to say that. Yeah. Yeah, it's and it's a little bit lower in speed. Yeah. They made so, some really great – they made some good points. Like he really doesn't come inside of that all that often. He kind of stays on the outside part of the plate. I think it's, you know, partially because he wants everything to look like his slider, right? Yeah. Uh, he's never going to throw a slider inside to a right-handed hitter, so why would he throw – I think that's his mindset. I really think that's his mindset. So why would he throw a fastball inside to a right-handed yeah, Dude, it's crazy. I've talked about this with people too. Um, and, and I was, I was talking about this recently and I was like, just think about it. Like DeGrom is literally dominating by just throwing through one plane pretty much. He just yeah. like lives on the outside part in two pitches. He does the fastball on the outside part and then the slider that looks like a fastball. He just does it over and over again. Remember his like, changeup? <laughs> yeah, yeah, change yeah, we haven't seen that in like, I don't know what, three weeks. But he makes pitches. He threw, curve, so he threw his curveball. Like uh, I think he threw one curveball a year. I feel like I remember watching it. <laughs> that yeah. was a big deal. But, but he makes it look so simple. Like yeah, they they could lean over the plate or whatever. <laughs> but the fastball and slider are so good. Yeah. And like literally on the same plane yeah, really all the way through. Cool. Like he he knows when someone's leaning over, and that's when he'll like miss inside with the fastball. Like he he knows what he's doing. Um, they, they did, you know, you got to give the Brewers credit. They barreled them up twice. They had two solo shots, but you also got to look at, look at that as, Hey, they're solo shots. DeGrom, you know, Jake didn't put anybody on base, right? He didn't walk anybody again. Um, it's just, and I, I mean, Jose Peraza, we got to talk about him too. I mean, this guy has been a revelation off the bench for us. He, I, I was, I, rem, I remember about a month ago at this point where I was just drooling over him and how he was such a professional filling in at second base. He has been unbelievable as just a professional. Uh, it's really just, it's so night and day from, you know, the last two years, honestly. Dude, he's, uh, I mean, as Ronnie, didn't Ronnie say he's the, the king of the bench mob? Like, he, he I, it, it even, like, you know, two, three weeks ago, you're wondering what are we going to do with him, like, you know, when everyone comes back. But now it's like, no, he's got a spot on this team, man. He, sure. <laughs> because not only, like, yeah, he's got pop in his bat, right? And he, he 
gets on base and that's all good. But man, he knows how to play the game, and I feel like that's he's a good fielder. For everyone else. He's a good fielder. He's a really good fielder. I, I want to talk about that a little bit. We'll definitely circle back to that. I think one of my favorite parts from this game too was. Well, one of my least favorite parts was Diaz coming in in a non-save situation. He wasn't great there. We all we we all know that. I do think there's part of like Luis Rojas is like, hey man, if this is the playoffs, you're coming in. So like, let's get you ready for it now. I I get that. Um, but my favorite, I I am going back to my boy. My favorite part of this game had to be James McCann and a battle, a battle at the plate. He was fouling pitches off it. Uh, taking pitches on the outside corner, uh, and he worked a walk. And, and, like, we've seen him struggle. We've seen him ground into double plays and strike out looking, and that was, I think, one of his best at-bats of the year. Um, and, he, he, you know, it got it really got things going for us there. Yeah, no, it did. It did. And yeah, I was going to say, honestly, like, even if he didn't get on base there, He's already done his job because he's done that before, even as recently as like, I feel like over the weekend and stuff like Mm -hmm. like that recently, he's had some really good at bats where he has a 10 pitch at bat. I think Pete even said something in a post game uh, presser. It was against the Yankees. He did the same thing. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, he didn't get a hit against the Yankees that time, but it's like he wore them out so much to the point where, you know, the next guy up just automatically has an advantage. And it's yep. a little and things like that that this team is good at. And let's talk about – I mean, we talked about – our last podcast was, you know, a little bit about Brandon Nimmo, but he has been – talk about a guy taking pitches. I mean, him coming back to this lineup, it, it's like the little, you know, the little engine that could, right? He's like the spark plug that makes things go. I, and they're still not scoring a shit ton of runs, but uh, it, it's a hell of a lot more exciting. He gets on uh, – in the first inning – uh, he gets on base, um, and then uh, um, uh, Lindor had that like little bloopy, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. So uh, Nimmo rocks that double opposite field, which and I love when the ball tails away when he hits it um, in, in between the gap. And then Lindor hits that little blooper over third. Nimmo with great base running uh, took off right away, and we tie the game up one-to-one in the blink of an eye. Yeah, I feel like we're starting to click here yep. offensively, whereas, yep. like, maybe we don't need a bat, whereas, like, five, six days ago, I, yep. you know, we're talking Josh Donaldson. We're texting each other about that yep. and, and maybe needing a bat. Even because, like, we really didn't want to trade for a bat at all, right? We really don't want that. We never thought that we needed we would need to do that when in doubt, always more pitching. But it was getting to the point last week where it's like, I don't know, man. Maybe we need something. But these guys are scratching and clawing, and even then, this last game, they didn't they didn't get a ton of hits. They didn't, you know, score a ton of runs. But the clutch hitting recently against some of the game's best relievers. And yeah, and talk about someone who needed it, right? Like Jeff McNeil, who ne- absolutely you're, you're just Oh like, yeah. Oh yeah. Dude. This could really get him going. I mean, this yep. could be the one that gets him going. Talk about someone who needed it. I mean, he's batting like 210 right now. Uh, he, he's had a rough go of it. He's been hurt. He hasn't been hurt. He's been hurt. He's all over the place. Um, and just to see, like, it, it almost felt like he's the type of person that, you know, puts the weight of the world on his shoulders. And just, the like, he got to breathe after that game. Um, and to see him with a big smile on his face and chest bumping Pete, um, I, I, that was just perfect to watch him get the game-winning hit. If we can get him and Conforto into a bit of a groove here, um, it, it, this team's going to be really fun to watch down the stretch. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that. I think Pete is, like, very locked in at this point. Mm-hmm. And even, you know, his at-bats where he's swinging and a miss and it looks a lot better than, than in previous at-bats where he's just, Definitely. you know, all over the place, chasing pitches in the dirt. He's definitely more relaxed up there. Um, and and some clutch hits, man. Some really clutch hits. They've been really, really good. Um, four and one in their last five games. Right now they sit at 45 and 37. Uh, that puts them four and a half over the Phillies, five over the Nationals, and five and a half over the Braves who are reeling. They're dropping like flies. Um and they got another game tonight. They're going to get a chance to go up to 46 and 37. Um, I got a few things that I want to talk about. Um, first off, you kind of brought it up 
So let's get to it right now. Um, you know, Albert Almora Jr. was sent down. It looks like the Mets are going with uh, Billy McKinney. He's going to be their fourth outfielder off of the bench. And I think that's, you know, all, he, he's earned that. He's earned that right. And he's been really, really good. He's got a great arm out there. He plays a good outfield. Um, and I thought Luis did a great job, Rojas, of, of a pinch running for Pete Alonso and, and putting him in the game and then moving Dom over to first base was just really smart baseball um, earlier on in this game. Uh, so they're going to go Billy McKinney here. Um, but then when J.D. Davis comes back here, which we're, we're going to assume it's at after the All-Star break at this point, but it's going to be early on after the All-Star break, someone's got to go down. You can't have – uh, J.D. Davis, Jonathan Villar, Jose Peraza, and Luis Guillorme. So I would imagine one of those four is on the outside looking in. Uh, what, what are your initial thoughts there? My initial thought is definitely don't rush back, J.D. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just because this team is clicking now, and I, I can't even think of anyone that, you know, we'd want to send down especially or we'd want have to get rid of honestly a lot of those guys are veterans where they you know they they have their rights and their clauses and they'll probably go to another team which would really suck you know yeah. we won't have them in the minors um so you know i think we're a ways away from that still i still think we're two weeks at least away from That's even uh, from even a rehab uh start for for jd just because it seems so far away at this point you know, you have the all-star break, but um, I don't think it, like he's definitely not rehabbing before the all-star break. So no, I, I think they, they tried to ramp him up and get him in before the all-star break. And then it sounds like they were like, rushing. Uh, they yeah. did what you said. they're taking it slow. They're taking their time with it. I, I, I agree with you completely. I think what's the point of rushing somebody back when everybody's clicking right now? Um it would be hard to send any of those four down. I would almost look to run with a shorter bullpen and, and keep an, like an extra person on the bench, which you really don't see a lot in baseball. But um, it could be something that they, they might want to think about. Um, or maybe someone becomes available and you make a trade for a relief pitcher. I'm not sure what their ideas are there. But it sounds like we got a, a, a bit of um, a clusterfuck there with some infielders. Um, so – you know, keep, something just to keep an eye on down the road there for sure. Um, some other breaking news uh, that happened earlier this week was that uh, our boy Ty, Taiwan Walker, uh, was not selected to the All-Star game. Uh, Jacob deGrom was. He is the only Met uh, representing us at the All-Star game. So no Taiwan Walker. And now that uh, last night was rained out, we're not going to get two deGrom starts before the All-Star break. Uh, that was his last start today was before the All-Star break. So... Um, my, my, what's your, your initial reaction on Taiwan not making it? And if Jacob doesn't go, it seems like he would be an uh, easy replacement right there. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what Jake said too, with, uh, Jake not going, um, Taiwan definitely should have made it. It sucks for you. You know, you look at the teams and then you see guys from like Colorado and shit. Um, I mean, good enough pitcher, but he's got a four and a half ERA right. and they got it. They need a representative. And that's, right. that's kind of like, you know, you could go back and forth with like the MLB. Should they be doing that? I understand it to a certain degree, but damn, it sucks. Like it does. It does. It's not, yeah. it's, are you really getting the best players at the game? And the answer is no. Um, unfortunately, but I, I do get that every team also should. So maybe, I, I don't know. There's, there's got to be a way to circumvent it, but then you're talking, uh, you know, you're selecting more players, which means, you know, it, this goes yeah. in salary bonuses and stuff like that, and <laughs> it gets a little crazy. It's tough because it's like, you know, there are – it also means that there's some really, really good pitching in the NL because when you look Definitely. down that list, like, you know, we have Marquez in Colorado who probably shouldn't be there based on stats, right? Mm -hmm. But even, like, guys like – Trevor Rogers uh, down in Miami. I was like wondering about him because he was their lone representative. He's got some pretty good numbers. So it's like, it, it's not like I could, yeah, it's not like I could be like, oh, hey, Ty should be picked over him. No. You know, you could go back and forth with that. Um, I, think it's, I think it's an obvious choice that he replaces Jake, though, especially like, you know. I, I think so too. I was disappointed. 
uh, that Edwin Diaz didn't get selected. I, you know, I think Edwin's had a really good year. Um, obviously, like you had just mentioned, that the NL is a little bit stacked right now with pitchers. Um, but we, we've seen Edwin, you know, kind of really come full circle here as a Met. He had a really awful first year as a Met. Um, the second year was the shortened season, uh, and it got off to a rocky start with the uh, – well, the first game was great. The second game was the rocky start. Uh, with Ozuna hitting the home run off of him. But in save situations, Edwin has been really, really, really good. He struggled a little bit here um, uh, of late, but, you know, the ERA is down when the strikeouts are high. Uh, he, he seems to have, now, not today, um, but he seems to have a better control of the strike zone. Um, I, I was a little surprised he didn't get selected as well. I thought, you know, he, he could have been right there. It's just too hard for relievers to really – it's really hard for relievers to make the all-star game. You know, like AL I think has five all-star relievers, which it is, is a lot, man. That's a lot. I think NL only has four, and if NL carried another uh, reliever to the all-star game, then I'm sure Diaz would be the fifth. I wasn't, like, too shocked by that. I wasn't too, like, taken aback by that because, like, the relievers that are in the game – you know, they do pretty much have either very similar numbers or better numbers at this yeah. point. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I would say in comparison, you know, it's funny that you go into the Bronx and it was a Bronx beatdown, right? Um, and after that first game of the doubleheader in Yankee Stadium, they, you know, they announced that Garrett Cole and Araldis Chapman have been selected as all-stars. And it sucks that, you know, someone who has like a, a 22 ERA over his last 10 appearances is getting selected to the All-Star game in the AL. And then our guy uh, didn't make it. But um, I think Edwin's going to be here for the long haul. I, I wouldn't be shocked if uh, he gets an All-Star selection or two down the road here uh, as a Met. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't have like too much, com- too many complaints about it. I mean, you could have easily – put Ty on the team uh, ahead of a couple of these starters. But I, I got to think I will have a problem if he doesn't go in place of Jake. Yes, so would I. Um, okay, we got Robert Stock going tonight. The last time we saw Robert Stock pitch, he was a member of the Cubs pitching against the New York Mets. So he's going to open up for us tonight. Um, didn't use really anybody out of the bullpen today besides Diaz in game one. Um so I would imagine we're looking at something like Stock. If he could give you two innings, you could get Castro out there. You could get Lugo out there. We're going to try to piece this one together today. Um, and then we got four games coming up with the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, they're coming to City Field uh, right before the All-Star break. It's weird. We get four with the Pirates, the All-Star break, and then three in Pittsburgh with the Pirates. So the Mets play them seven games in a row. The Pirates – not that they stink, because they have been playing better baseball, but their record is what the record is, right? They're not a good team. They're not making the playoffs. Um, I don't want to take them lightly, but I also would love to get, you know, five out of seven games here. It would be awesome. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say it anyway. Like, the Mets' schedule in July stinks in terms of, like, I was looking to go to a game, and it's just like, ah. Eh. I don't yeah. got many options. It's yeah. like because we play the Pirates so much, then the Reds, and it's just like, I, you know, I kind of, I kind of like a few of the players on the Reds. Yes, yeah. yeah, and Winker, he's good. Um, but it's like, yeah, it's a little bit of a a weird schedule um, in June, especially, or I'm sorry, in July, especially uh, at home. Definitely, I'm gonna pull it up now. Yeah, so it's um. It's right after this. We have Pirates and the All Star break. Then after that, at the Pirates, and then yeah, at the Reds, uh, the Blue Jays. Uh, yeah, um, you get another double header with Atlanta. That's a one, two, three. Jesus, that's a five game series with Atlanta. That last, yeah, because it's a double header now too. And then Cincinnati. Yeah, that's a weird one, man. Five games in a row against any team. You could be. I don't care who it is. It's like we ah, might. I'm good. We might see some fisticuffs by the end of that series. I mean, everyone is going to be sick of everyone. And if the Braves are reeling the way that they're reeling right now, I, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody went fucking berserk in that dugout. 
Yeah, possibly. And but then I mean we finish off versus the Reds again at the end of the month. And it's like, yeah. all right, that's kind of a lame schedule, honestly, especially if you're looking to go to a game, which I was. So I might I'll probably just hold off until like August or something. Before August, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, just the seven in a row with Pittsburgh's interesting to me. I don't know who who decided that, but not that I'm mad about it, but like I think we could do a better job, be a little bit more creative, but whatever. Um, five out of seven, you know, going five and two against them would be really, 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 really good. Um, and getting this last one with the Brewers going for a sweep tonight, I would love that too, obviously. Um, all right, next up we've got uh, do you want to talk about a pitcher or do you want to talk about a header? I'll leave it up to you. Pitcher. Okay, pitcher is going to be Carlos Carrasco, who threw uh, live BP the other day. He's starting to rear up. Uh, they said mid nineties for him. Um, so this kind of goes back to like your trade deadline. You brought up a few people before that that I, I like. Uh, you brought up Herman Marquez, who made the All Star team, who I think Colorado is going to end up dealing. You brought up Josh Donaldson, who who I texted you about earlier this week at third base could be a uh, an option, but uh, I don't know if we're going to have to trade for a pitcher because it seems like the Mets are pretty confident in Cookie Carrasco coming back here and being able to, you know, give them some serious innings come end of July and into August and September. Yeah, I'm actually I'm excited about that for a number of reasons. One, because he's a good starting pitcher, but two, this bullpen, a lot of these guys need a break in the worst way possible, which is why Castro needs a break bad. Castro needs dude, a break. He needs the biggest break. I hope I hope yeah. he gets to go somewhere to an island and just go to get Bora Bora it. and get pina coladas in the little coconut and I don't want to see you until we're back in Pittsburgh. But. Yeah, I'll send him a drink and just have uh, a hula girl just massage his arm or something. <laughs> He has been rough, um, but you know we, I want to rely on him because he was re- he carried us for like a month and a half. For sure, you know, for sure. And when we need it, and let's let's stay there for a sec because Castro's struggling. It seems like Trevor May is coming back into his own, and then we get Lugo back. So the bullpen and Familia back off the DL too is another one. So it, it have been a little bit all over the place. Uh, actually, I just got an ESPN notification right now. Jacob DeGrom says he's skipping the All-Star game to spend time with his family and rest for the second half. So he will not be in Colorado, uh, which means you have an option open there for Taiwan Walker. But let's go back to the bullpen. Um, I, Carras- uh, Carrasco. Uh, Castro is definitely someone who needs a little bit of a break. You can tell that the innings have been getting it to him. I think this is also another case of somebody who – have has he seen a 162 game season? I don't know. Like last year, he pitched in in the 60 game season. The year before, um, um, he was with Baltimore. So we don't really we don't know what we're getting into here with him. Yeah, I mean, I think he I think he has. I think he's thro- you know kind of used to throwing a lot of innings at this point. But the way we used him, we used him a lot in May and June, and. Um, you know, I don't know if he's ever been used to being like he was out there every other day, it seems. So he's racking up the appearances. So hopefully mm-hmm. we tone that down a little bit. Um, I mean, still only 33. I mean, 33 innings is a decent amount, right? But I mean, a reliever who leads the league in innings is going to go 80, 80 something, right? So we're still not like crushing them, but it's definitely just probably the consistency and having him out there nearly every other day. Well, the most amount of innings he's ever thrown was 86 and a third. That was in 2018 with Baltimore. Right now he's at 33 and a third. Um, His ERA is a three, five. It would like to get that down quite a bit. Um, Cause I do think his stuff is better than a three, five. Um, he's been way better than a three five. Honestly, it's probably a one five two weeks ago. He's had some rough yeah. innings. Yeah. Um, he's just got to find the strike zone consistently. Um, I, I just, I, he needs, he needs the week. He needs some time, let the arm, you know, heal up. And then maybe we don't have to use him as much because we have guys like Familia Lugo, uh, uh, Trevor May, Edwin Diaz, Miguel Castro. We, we got guys in this bullpen who can throw, man, uh, as long as they're throwing strikes. Yeah, I still think it's one of our biggest strengths is the the guys that come up, you know, 
remember we like so many Mets teams in the past, you'd see someone get loose and you're like, Oh no, it doesn't happen with this team. It's no, like, all right, I roll with that. Bobby Parnell. Oh shit. Oh, Josh Edgen. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, speaking of lefties, dude, Aaron loop has been fucking, that's awesome. another one. He's been awesome, man. And I'm like, not- I, I don't want to knock anybody. I'm not trying to put anybody down. Obviously, we're doing a podcast here. We're going to compare, right? But, like, we had Justin Wilson last year, and I thought Justin Wilson was pretty good. I was a little disappointed we didn't resign him. And he's just absolutely – he's he's been an awful year in the Bronx. He's struggled. He's been hurt the entire year. It seems like Boone doesn't know when to put him into the games and when to take him out of the games. He's just all over the place. Aaron Loop has filled that lefty void for us that, that was left from Justin Wilson – and and been freaking lights out. Sandy's scouting department is doing something right with guys like that and Villar. Like they hit the nail on the head with these guys. Absolutely, absolutely. They've been really, really good. Um, that's another one. I'm glad you brought up loop. No loop for you. Um, all right. So I gave you the option before we did pitching. We're going to go to hitting. I'm going to say two words here, and I'm going to get your initial reaction. Uh, are you ready? Yes. Lindor bunting. All right. That that last bunt, what was it? It was <laughs> yesterday, right? Yeah. Um, it worked. It worked. Yeah, man. But, you got to a run. Yeah. I, it just showed me, like, that he's still not fully comfortable at the plate. And I, I didn't love the bunt in that situation. And this is coming from a guy who likes a bunt in most situations. I really do. Like it, I like it at the. Uh, honestly, I like it at the beginning of a game. I, I really do. I like you know, if we could scratch something across or put some pressure on the defense. I don't mind if Lindor is doing that early on. You know, you you pay a guy like that a lot of money. You kind of want him to hit in the clutch and and to you know swing the bat in that situation. It worked out for him. I'll say that five sacrifice bunts at the in the first yeah, half. Yeah, he leads the league in sacrifice bunts. It's too much. It's too yeah. Much. Uh, he's a great bunter. I get it, but here. All right, so here it is. Here it is. This is, right. this is my exact thoughts. I, I'll never mind if he tries to do it if he's bunting for a hit, right? And if he can push it that way and sacrifice and gets That's thrown out, happens. if he gets thrown out by a half a foot because he's busting and trying for a hit. I'm all good with it because you're trying to, you know, make something happen. You're putting pressure on that defense in a different way than just sacrificing. It's a lot different, and I don't like it when he's just squaring up, like, here I am. I'm sacrificing. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I get it. I get it. I will say, okay, so Dom Smith did it today, um, and he was doing it for a hit. And Ron made a great point. He said, I don't like doing it with one strike. I'd rather you just – if you're going to do it, do it. Do it when it's a yeah. zero zero count and you want to push one down the line. And I'm all for that, keeping a defense on their toes. Um, I don't mind. I'm not one of those people that's like, ah, oh, a fucking Lindor, $340 million to have him bunt. Like, no, like you, you people are being dumb and reactionary. Um, I do get the idea that he's like trying to set the table for others behind him. Um, if maybe he feels a little off balance and he thinks that somebody else, you know, it's very selfless, right? Um, at the same time, like if we're going to go anywhere in the playoffs, like we need him roping doubles through into the gap. Um, yeah, I was going to say he can move those runners along by getting a hit. <laughs> yeah. he, has, he has had a much better week. I mean, if you look at him with the in the Yankee games, like he was awesome. He was unbelievable. Yeah, good. Drawing good. walks. Um, he, he's been so solid defensively. Even a few of the balls today it, it, with um, um, later on in the game against Milwaukee um, in game one, uh, you know, Rosario doesn't, didn't have the range to get to some of these balls. He gets there so easily. I mean, you just watch him glide out there in the, uh, in the infield. And it, the throw is always, you know, nine times out of ten, right at Pete's glove at first base. Um, the bunting thing, it doesn't bother me. Um, I will say if it continues, something's not right. You know, we're at the point where it's like you've done it a few times. It's worked out. But, like, we, we, if we're going to be a really good team here, we need you to hit. 
Um, and I, I, you know, I, I'm so I'm at this point forward. I think it would all it would it would start to bother me. Is how yeah. I think. No, no, and that's fair. Um, and even guys like you, I, I don't care. It, it, I never get mad at really at anyone trying to push a bunt down the third base line. If you're a lefty and they got the shift on, like Bryce Harper, people get pissed at him for doing that. Well, it's like, well, you're going to get mad. Actually, they're going to move that guy out. over a little bit and the third baseman over a little bit. And, you know, we're going to have a bit of an even playing field for him to hit now. Right. For so sure. it's things like that, that it's like, you know, if he does it in the first, second, third, fourth inning, whatever, but it's setting you up for an eighth, ninth inning at bat, where that yes. third batsman is playing his true position a little bit more. Yep, yeah, I think it's it's smart. I will say, I've said this before, Lindor is a much better hitter from the right side of the plate. I mean, things are just, when he's on the right side of the plate, it just feels more natural to me, just, you know, watching it. Um, but I do feel like when he's when he's drawing walks and he's getting on base, good things happen, man. Uh, we score runs when he's on base. Yeah. Yeah, no, we do because you know he also capable of stealing. He he draws a lot of attention over there, man. Yeah, he draws a lot of attention over there, which is great for sure. Um, all right, I guess we can finish up with a few of the names that we talked about earlier with some of the trade deadline acquisitions. I, I still think it's a little early to talk trade deadline, um, but. Josh Donaldson, we texted about a little bit earlier on this week. I want you to tell the people why you are for it and why you are against it. Yeah, I mean, I, I was more open to it last week, seeing our struggles, but still so very hesitant and overall just against it because he makes a ton of money, and if we're taking that on, we'll be over the luxury tax, and I want to be over the luxury tax for someone else maybe. I agree. Right. Yeah. I yeah. think the idea of trading for him and a former MVP, it's like, poof, that's exciting. You stick that bat right into the middle of the lineup. But if you also look at his production and what he's done this year, it's not great. It's not. No, no. And, and so you're trading for a player on, on let's call it his decline, um, who's got multiple years and a lot of money left on a deal. Um, and you're probably going to have to give up something. I, I don't think it's going to be anything major. But you're going to have to give up something. And I, quite frankly, I, I think there's going to be better options available. Um, so I'll throw another name at you for third base uh, with a team that is just, I mean, you, we talk about the Braves reeling. I mean, this team is, is the fucking Titanic right now. It's the Chicago Cubs. And we've talked about this person a little bit before. We'll talk about him again. Uh, Chris Bryant's got to be out there. I mean, if the Cubs, if the Cubs are, are about to, I think they're going to lose like 12 in a row or something like that. Um, so, I, Brian's going to be a free agent. Rizzo's going to be a free agent. Javi Baez is going to be a free agent. There's a chance that that they could lose all three of those in free agency. You would think they would want to try to maximize someone along the way, and it, it could end up being hard, uh, 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 Chris Bryan that's on his way out at the trade deadline. Yeah, I mean, he definitely will be available, but, uh, you know, I think. They're going to get a haul, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm still very certain that they're going to get a real haul. Whereas, uh, you know, the haul for us in order to get them might include someone like a, a Beatty or an Alvarez or something like that. And they're going to get it from someone, but it, it cannot be from us. So again, let, me, let, let me just stop you right there. Any trade that anybody says, oh, I want Francisco Alvarez, you hang up the phone and you don't ever talk yeah. to that person yeah. again. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Um, yeah, they're going to get a, a lot in return for Chris Bryant. I don't know if we have the material to do that trade at this point. Um, it would have to be J.D. Davis, and they'd have to really like J.D. Davis, and I don't really know if, you know, a team is, is going to fall in love with J.D. Davis. J.D. Davis, Davis is not going to be the centerpiece of that Chris Right, Bryant. right. But he, he'd, yeah. have, he'd have to be going back as well. Um, I just don't know if that's – that's the right move either. Yeah. Um, all right, and the last name I'll throw at you, we're going to move away from third base for now. Uh, we'll talk about uh, an all-star we mentioned a few times already in the podcast, uh, Herman Marquez, um, I think is someone who is definitely going to get traded from the Colorado Rockies. Um, all-star this year, he's got really good stuff, uh, can lose the strike zone at times. 
Um, but if we are in the market for the pitcher and if we are a little nervous about maybe David Peterson or maybe we're a little nervous about Carlos Carrasco uh, coming off of their IL stints, maybe this is someone that the Mets look to and they say, hey, we can add some pitching depth here. Yeah, this guy doesn't do much for me. Honestly, I haven't seen him pitch much. His stats aren't great. I know he's in Colorado, but he's not moving the needle at all for me. Honestly, the the biggest name that's the most intriguing that you've mentioned is Donaldson, and maybe that's just because he he sounds like a country music star when he speaks. <laughs> you want to bring that guy and his hair into the into the locker room? <laughs> I, he, that's the only thing that's intriguing me right now. No, I, I think you're underselling uh, Marquez a little bit here. He's got really good stuff. He pitches in Colorado, so the ERA is going to be a little bit inflated. Uh, we don't have time for good stuff, though. We, we, like, good stuff yeah. is cool, but we okay, need results. But, okay, but who's who's our fourth and fifth starters at this point, you know? Yeah, but when you get in the playoffs, you don't really need a fourth and fifth starter, do you? Yeah, you got to get there first. I think we're doing all right. We'll be all we right. Doing I, all right. Doing I all mean, right. Marquez is the same, though. It's like they're going to get someone pretty decent for him. And I'm not, not, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. About I think that. they will. I think they will. Like I'm saying, like, if you're comparing some of our prospects to others, like, I, I guarantee you they get probably like a definitely a top 15 prospect from a team, maybe even a top 10. Would you trade? All right. Would you trade a Khalil Lee and and maybe a, you know someone else in like single or double A? Nothing crazy for Herman Marquez. Yeah, I don't know enough about Khalil Lee, and I know he was up, but it's like, dude struggled. Yeah, but I no, I don't. Uh, he's he's young. He's twenty three. He is like what? He's in our he's top ten he prospects. Gonna hit a curveball. He's gonna hit. It, listen, it's a good question. I I would. Uh, I would trade Khalil Lee. I, I'm not like for no, keeping him at all, him. but no, but he's, uh, not for Alvarez. he's no Ronnie Murray. Would you trade Ronnie Mauricio or J I, I, I would no, trade. no, I say absolutely not. And so you know, I was talking to somebody about this. They said, "Well, well, Mauricio plays shortstop, and so does Lindor, and you just signed Lindor for ten years." I go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I get it. All right." You worry about the position later. Like if Mauricio can play and he can build up his value, hold on to him, man. And and who's to say that, you know, I don't know, maybe two, three years down the road, four years down the road, maybe they Mauricio's showing you he can play second place, he can play third place, he could be he, you know, move out to the outfield too. You you don't you don't keep a guy because you don't you don't get rid of a guy because oh oh he's a shortstop. We can't have him anymore. No, I and I agree with that. And I I, I... He, I would consider him just as untouchable as Alvarez, to be honest. Yeah. And, you know, you bringing up Khalil Lee, that's a really good question because that's like that that made me think about it. Would I trade Khalil Lee and say Sousa Pecky because I think he's number 10 on our uh, list? If Lee and Sousa Pecky for Herman Marquez, I'm not sure if I do do that. I, mean, I, I don't really am not sure. I don't know. That's a great question. Obviously, these are, you know, questions that the Mets are going to have to answer. Um, down the road here, but it's just, you know, flowing some names out here just to, to see uh, what's going on and where, where the brain's at. And obviously, you know, things are going to change before the all-star break, right? It, someone, it, you know, knock on wood, someone could get hurt. Um, maybe JD Davis gets, you know, maybe the rehab assignment doesn't go well. I, I don't know. Anything, anything could happen. Um, so just something to keep an eye on. Uh, obviously we are, you know, we're not going to be trading for bench players like what we did in, in 15 when we traded for Kelly Johnson and Juan Uribe. Um, I, I think if they're going to do something, they're going to address third base and they're going to address the starting pitching. And you might see maybe they add a relief pitcher if they're nervous about Gazelman uh, or Sean Reed Foley not being able to cut it for us. Or, and I know Gazelman's hurt, but um, I think Sean Reed Foley just landed on the IL too. But um, uh, maybe they had a relief pitcher um, um, to bolster the bullpen down the road here. But, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. I definitely think they will try to be aggressive, um, and I definitely think they they are going to hold their blue chips. Uh, there is not a, a chance in the world that they trade the likes of Beatty or, um, or uh, Alvarez or Mauricio for that matter. No, no. And, like – I don't need us to do a crazy trade at the break, but like I could definitely see us just getting a quality fourth or fifth veteran guy, right? 
and we've talked about Danny Duffy in the past. Honestly, right after I said that, a couple of days later, uh, Ron and Keith brought him up. Um, and, he, and he hasn't even been great lately. Um, he had a little bit of a left forearm strain too, so um, something to keep a watch on, but he's pitching now. He's doing all right. So I, I'm still intrigued by him. Uh, dude, I'm intrigued a little bit, a little bit um, by Johnny Cueto. Yeah, but San Fran's good. Sam, yeah, they are, but they're like I don't know. Like, You're like uh, waiting for them to like you know trip over the hurdle, <laughs> you know. Um, it's weird that they're in first place and they're in first place by a lot, but so maybe they won't. But trade the Dodgers, them. you know, the Dodgers are. What do you say to your fan base if you're trading them? Oh man, to be the, you know. No, um, no, you're right. You're right. The, the problem with San Fran is the division's tough. You got the Padres and the Dodgers as well. So, um, yeah, I, I'm looking at teams more like record wise to see. Maybe Gibson down in Texas is sold, but you're going to have to, you know, give up a fortune for him. No, he hasn't. He, he's not. He hasn't proven enough either, honestly. He's got like, like a he's got like a two four this year, something like that. I know, but is this him really? Is this like his first year putting it all together? You know what yeah. I mean? He's a young kid. He's got they. they you you got to think of it more like he's probably got a. Ton, they probably got a ton of control on him too. You know what I mean? Like they, he, he's probably got years still before he's a free agent. He's got a one nine eight this year. I mean, yeah, last year he had a five thirty five. The year before he had a four eighty. Yeah, that. Yeah, no, that, that's 30. what I mean. More so the two thousand nineteen season. He's thirty. He's thirty three. He's 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 that old. So let me look up his contract. Maybe dude, maybe. I I just know him as the four fifty ERA guy. That's all I've known him as, you know, and like waiting for him to put it together. Okay, so he signed a three-year, $28 million contract with the Rangers. Um, he is in year two of that, so he is owed $10 million this year. Next year, uh, he's owed $7 million, and then yeah, after not- he's a free agent. I mean, that's you're not paying him a ton of money either. That could be you know, somewhere where you, where you look at. Well, maybe they could rip someone off with, with the trade in him because they don't have any kind of team down there. <laughs> um, think. And to open a new ballpark like that, oh. I dude, I can't believe because uh, I was like looking at Cueto, like maybe he's a five guy that they don't really need. They're pitching. I don't even know how they win games. It's crazy. And the, look at the lineup too. Our boy Willie Flowers out there. Yeah, it makes Game no Kaplan. sense. Game they got, dude, they got nothing. Uh, it's it's weird. It's a weird one. Buster Posey's having an unbelievable year. If you want to look up some stats, he's he's killing it this year. I mean, he's a Hall of Famer. He for a uh, for sure Hall of Famer, a lot Hall of Famer. That's just what he is, man. He's but I mean, they got everyone. Longoria's been out and hurt. Like, just they don't have much going on at all. And they just win. They just yeah. win. All right, you got anything else? Um. Okay, so with the Grom, would you? With, uh, and they've talked about this. He talked about this during the presser. Might throw a little bit on Sunday. What do you think about that? Oh uh, yeah, I, I have no problem with that. I, I listen. Right, if it's a bullpen day anyway, couple innings maybe at the start. Yeah. We don't yeah. have a starter lined up for Sunday either. Right, right. So. And, and I'm sure he has no problem with it. I mean, his last what three starts? He's been fine. We haven't heard anything about arm issues, neck issues, back issues, shoulder issues, elbow issues. No, there's been no issues, right? Um, so I, I have no problem with him going out there. Listen, the guy's a gamer. Um, you want to go out there and throw a few innings by all means, go ahead. I would have someone open up one inning in the beginning, some reliever, anyone Castro say, right. First inning and then bring Jacob in for innings two and three. So maybe he could steal a W. (laughs) I was going to, yeah, good luck trying to get him to agree to that, coming out of the bullpen. I, I, know, I know, I know. I know. But if I explain it like that to him, man, hey, we'll <laughs> yeah. you a W because we owe you so much throughout your whole career. I, you know what? We've been pretty good about it this year, honestly. We've been good. We've, you know, even today, and there have been games before where we kind of take an L off his record last minute. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
All right, we got game two coming up in a half an hour. Robert Stock, baby, uh, just just get us through the first inning. Let's see what you got, kid. I like. I thought he had really good stuff when he when he uh, when he pitched against us earlier on. He throws hard. Um, he's got that catcher type delivery where he throws from the ear. Um, he was the guy that I think he graduated high school at 16. He's really really smart. Um, and he was like the uh, Keith was making fun of him. I think he was like. Uh, Mr. Baseball and was like on Sports Illustrated when he was 13 years old or something and Keith made it cracked a joke about that by the way I hope Keith is doing okay did you hear about that yeah yeah quite the incident dude is a mess (laughs) this is like his pinky toe right yeah and he was like he was like well I don't want to be the center of attention don't talk about me (laughs) (laughs) oh man so good All right. I got nothing, man. We went a little long this time. I hope you guys enjoy it. That's another episode of the LFG podcast, LFGM podcast, but in the books.